Good morning. I'm early again today, and I made sure that I was on the right page for this to be on today. Uh, sorry about the problems, but I just have been answering lots of texts and different messages back and forth. And, but today we look at the first three chapters of the book of Micah. And uh, Micah is one of those books that um, it's a little bit different than a lot of books of prophecy. Most books of prophecy are, you know, gloom and doom and, and all of that. But Micah is much more kind of an impassioned plea in many ways. Um, and there's, you know, it goes back and forth between, you know, the the warnings and then and then the, the promises of future. And... And we won't see it today, but in Micah 5, we have some of the words that we we read on, on Christmas or Christmas Eve most of the time. Um, there's not a lot known about Micah uh, other than that, but um, the book is written um, about the coming judgment of Israel and within the coming judgment, also the, the coming of the Savior. And we'll read that, as I said, in, in Micah 5. We don't read that today. But today again, it, you know, the, the book starts, The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So if you kind of wanted to put it into a, a date line, um, you know, it's somewhere in around the, in that 700 to 720 B.C. in, in that area. Could, you know, we, we've got those those three leaders' names that we could go back into the book of Kings and Chronicles and, and date it uh, a little bit more that way. And, and you know, it's... Uh, but starting in verse 2, you know, Hear all you peoples, you know, and, and there's an exclamation mark on the end of that. Of course, in the old... In, in the written languages, um, they most likely wouldn't have had, I mean, in, in, in the day of Micah, they wouldn't have probably had an exclamation mark. And and sometimes they didn't have, like, the vowels and those things. They were, you know, saving as much paper and, and space as they could because it was um, hard to find and expensive, whichever. But so, you know, the, a lot of what we find in the Bible is... Uh, you know the punctuation in that is is due to interpretation later on, and that's um, that comes into play in uh, many different pa peoples. But it's, it's here, all you peoples, listen, O Earth, and all that is in it. You know, so it's, it's two calls to open your ears, you know, and um, to hear this word of God, and and then the next part: let the Lord God be a witness against you. You know, oh, you know, and I've mentioned that before. Why would we want to have God as a witness against us? I mean, this is, I mean, it's just showing that, you know, that God is righteous and that we're sinners. And we know that. But, you know, God is a witness against you. And, um, and God is the one who judges us. And God is the, he's the big kahuna, if you want to talk about it that way. But, um, you know, so we are to listen. Listen to the words that God is sending to us through the prophets, through through the people we encounter each and every day. You know, and he says, the Lord is coming out of his place. He will come down and tread the high places. The mountains will melt under him. The valleys will split, you know, like wax before the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. And when I thought about that, waters pouring down like a steep place, you think about a waterfall. And um, I've seen a few waterfalls, and probably the last one I saw was just, you know, right in the Twin Cities. You know, you're, you know, you're thinking, you know, you know that there's a the river runs through there and stuff, but you don't think that here there's going to be a waterfall right there in the cities. But the water comes over, and there's there's nothing to stop it, you know, from dropping until it hits the ground again, because it just, you know, it, it's it's just like if you you, you jump off of a, a, a chair, you jump off of something, you know, you're just boom, you're going down until you hit the bottom. And so water's poured down like a steep place. I see the, I see that waterfall coming and as it hits the ground or hits the water below, it splashes 
and it washes away, you know, the things that are beneath it. And why is this all going to happen? He says, because of the transgressions of Jacob. And when it says Jacob, it's that reminder that Jacob's name was changed to Israel and that he is the father of the nation of the Jews, you know. And and so it, it's not just Jacob, one person. It is the whole descendants of, of Jacob you know, tied together. You know, it says, what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? What are the high places of Judah? And, you know, but he's talking about the idol worship and, and so many different things that that have gone on. Uh, in verse 8 of chapter 1, uh, I will wail and howl. I will strip them naked. And, you know, he's, he's going to mourn for, for Israel he's, and for Judah. He's putting on the sackcloth and ashes. He's lamenting over their sins and um, just realizing the, the depth of of what they've done. Chapter 2 uh, talks about the the headline in my Bible says, Woe to the evildoers. And then verse 6 is lying prophets. And and we have both of those people that are, are talked about and mentioned, you know, and you know, woe to those who devise iniquity, who work out evil in their beds, and that you know, and then and then the lying prophets. I mean, that they come with with their own words, with their own ideas, with nothing that really God has given them, but um, but just their own words. And it says, you know, you who are named to the house of Jacob is the spirit of the Lord restricted. Are these not his doing? Do you know and but it's you know who's putting these words in your mouth or where are you getting this and and it's you know it's a kind of a reminder to me that as we as we read the Bible we need to use the Bible to interpret the rest of the Bible and that's you know so it's when we get into Micah five when we read that prophecy I mean we'll use the later stories of of the Gospels and of Jesus' story to to know more of what it's really saying the last few verses, the last couple of verses of chapter 2 talk about the restoration of Israel. Surely I will assemble all of you, O Jacob, Israel, my people. I will gather the remnant and I will put them together. And so again, we have this, you know, mixed in there with, uh, with the evildoers and the lying prophets. We have that promise. So it's, you know, it's not just all woe and, and destruction and gloom and doom, but it's it's the the promise mixed in. Chapter three talks about the again wicked doers and prophets, and in verse eight, uh, is Micah saying, "Truly, I am full of the power of the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to trans to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin." So, Micah is saying, "Though these are God's words given to me, I am filled with God's Spirit. It's not just me." speaking and making this up and then it goes on and and you know chapter three ends with with some some of the gloom and doom jerusalem will become heaps of ruins and the mountains of the temple temple like the bare hills of the forest destruction and and so we have the prophet again you know speaking reminding the jews us too of our sins of our failings of of our need for this God who is our Savior. Um, on this next to the shortest day of the year, may you know God's continued blessings and grace.